All right, so again, a reminder that the next Thursday will be the first midterm. Uh, Dr. Eldridge will send out the email about the details of the, uh, how to take the first midterm. Okay, so it covers everything from the beginning till today's class, right? Okay, so now um, we've seen so far that uh, doing binary search uh, in the sorted array, or we have also talk about how to perform select operation. Okay, imagine now you're mating a database indexed by some keys. Okay, this is a key, just a real values numbers. And uh, um, so it's a database of uh, all students here at UC San Diego. Okay, and you want to support the following operations. You want to be able to search for a specific record. Okay, so let's do uh, a notation. You want to be able to search. You want to also uh, return, say, the students with the uh, highest GPA, for example, or the one with the minimum GPA, and so on. Okay. Um, now, but in addition to this, let's say you also want to perform the so-called dynamic operations. Okay, so, uh, namely insertion. You may want to insert a new record of a new student. Okay. Now, if the student graduate, you may want to delete their record. Okay, or you want to find the uh, a certain uh, a student with a, a certain property and then delete it from the database and so on. So these are called dynamic operations because this changes the uh, database itself. While performing a search query doesn't change the database itself. Okay, all right. So if this is what you want to support um, with your database, how can we achieve that? All right. Well. Um, we already talked about one possibility is that say I store everyone uh, in the array. Okay, uh, we store their uh, keys, and first we sort these keys. Okay, uh, after that we can perform, for example, the search query very efficiently just by using the binary search uh, procedure. Okay, and we can also return the maximum, minimum easily. Maximum is the last entry in the array, and the minimum is the first entry in the array. Okay. We can also perform the so-called successor or predecessor operation, which essentially a successor of a given key is basically the element in sorted the order following it. Okay, so once you have everything sorted, then this can be done efficiently in order a constant time. Same for predecessor. Predecessor of a key is basically the element in the sorted order, which is immediately before it. Okay, so so the um, by first the pre-processing the da uh, database, the sorting all the keys, then we can answer all these operations pretty efficiently, okay? Um, however, if we're using the array as our uh, uh, data structure to store these um, keys, it doesn't handle the dynamic operation very well, okay? So if we want to insert, um, if we want to insert a new element, okay? Um, uh, in Python, for example, array is really implemented by dynamic array. You can put the new element in the end or at the beginning, but the problem is that you want to still maintain that this array still should be sorted. Okay, so and that would take time. You would have to adjust the array so that the new resulting array is still sorted. So it takes linear time. Same for deletion. If you remove an entry from a array, then you left a gap over there. Then you have to shrink the array to fill that gap. It still take a linear time. So all of this dynamic operation, unfortunately, using array, this are expensive. It takes linear time for each of this operation. Okay. And what we want to ask today is that, do we have a better data structure so that we can uh, support all of these operations efficiently? Okay. Note that this dynamic operations are very important in practice. Okay. Whenever you maintain a database, you want to be able to change it dynamically. Okay. All right, um, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to introduce a so-called binary search tree data structure, which can support all these operations um, in the uh, in time, which is proportional to the height of the tree. Okay, we'll talk about uh, how to implement these key operations, um, which we're just going to go over quickly for those of you who has already taken uh, DSC thirty. I believe you have already seen these operations. Okay, and then uh, we're going to talk about that this can be extended to the so-called balanced binary search tree, which to keep it the height of the tree low, okay, because the time complexity, as we see here, is proportional to height of the tree, okay. And then in the end, oops, we're also going to talk about how to augment the binary search tree data structure so it can also support other operations like uh, uh, finding medium, return the order statistics, select operation very efficiently, okay. All right. 
So what is a binary search tree? Well, a binary search tree first has to be a binary tree. So what is a binary tree? A binary tree is just a rooted tree where other than the, um, uh, where each node has at most two children. And we're going to order these two children. One of them we call the left child, the other one we're going to call it the uh, right child. Okay. So in general, this tree data structure is maintained using uh, linked uh, uh, using pointers. Okay. So every node in the tree, let's say that um, this um, three here, every node would contain a domain which store the key value. Okay. Um, which is just say in this case, some member. Okay, and then it's going to uh, store a pointer pointing at its left child. And then another pointer, this is a right point pointer pointing at its right child. Okay, in general, a node would also store a pointer pointing at its parent. If it's the root, then the parent is, uh, you don't have a parent. So the parent we set it to be nil, which is just empty pointer. Okay, in Python, this is usually none. Okay, um, and um, same for every node. So for two, for example, it's the left child is Neil, it's the right child is also Neil, but its parent is pointing at the node three, that's its parent, okay? So once every node store all this information, we encode the tree information um, uh, completely, okay? So in a binary tree, um, it's a root of the tree. Every node has at most the two children, left and right, okay? And other than the root, everyone has one parent, okay? The root parent is new. All right. Now, um, so for example, uh, suppose we start from the root and then we follow the left pointers, okay? Go to the left child. So from 13, we'll go to six. And then from six, follow the left child pointer, we'll go to three. And from three, we'll go to two and so on, okay? And from two, we we'll go to Neil and it doesn't have it anymore, okay? All right. Um, now, those nodes, as we said that um, one of the node is the root of the tree, the node that doesn't have the parent pointer, the parent is Neil, okay? And um, a node is a leaf node if both of the children uh, or empty or, or neo pointers, okay? So in this case, these are all the leaf nodes, okay? And uh, in general, we talk about um, the left, given a node, let's say we consider it as three, okay? The left subtree is simply the subtree rooted at its left child. So its left child is the node with the value two, and the left subtree is the subtree rooted at two, okay? For, uh, for three, the right subtree is the subtree rooted at four. So this is what we have, okay? And a complete binary tree is basically as we have in this example, where um, it's, a, it's, it's, um, it's a binary tree where every node has exactly two children other than the leaf nodes, okay? All right, um, now, um, what to make a binary tree, a binary search tree, is um, the so if a tree satisfies the so-called binary search tree property, what is it? The basics is that every node, so let's say we take a node X, okay? So it has, it has a, this is a left child. Okay, and then you have a left subtree and the right subtree, okay? If for every node X, the key at x is bigger than anybody in its left subtree, while it is smaller than anybody z in its right subtree. Okay, when this holds, then we say that this node, uh, this um, tree satisfies the binary search tree property. Okay, so um, intuitively, here is an example of a, bi a valid binary search tree where we can see, we can verify for every node, say six. Everyone in its left subtree, three to four are all smaller than six, while everybody in the right subtree, seven and nine are bigger than six. Okay, same for say 18. Everybody in the left is 13 and 17, which is smaller than eight, while everybody in the right is bigger than it. Okay, so this is a valid binary search tree. Well, if I change this quantity, this one is not a valid binary search tree because um, 
here uh, for 18, this left 19, and its left subtree is actually uh, bigger than um, 18. So that's a valid binary search tree property. Okay, or another example. So let's go back to the previous example. So here is valid. So if I now put 19 here, okay, then for 17, then this is still valid. However, for 18, this is not a, the binary search tree property is violated now because 19 is bigger than 18 while 19 is in the left subtree. Okay, so this is not binary search tree once I add 19. Okay, all right. All right, note that um, the given the same set of uh, p values elements, there can be many possible binary search tree uh, built upon that. Okay, so for example, this is a valid binary search tree. This is a binary search tree defined over six, two, three, four, seven, nine, this elements, okay? So here's another valid binary search tree for the same elements. I could have the following. I could have nine, seven, six, four, three, two. This is also a valid binary search tree on the same set of elements. Okay, so in this in this tree, uh, all of this is basically essentially it's a pass, and all the nodes has uh, um, the right child is uh, nil is empty. Okay. All right, so we are given the binary search tree there uh, because of this binary search property. Okay, it actually encodes a lot of relative um, uh, order information of the of the key values stored inside, okay? So once we're given the binary search tree, we can quickly identify where the minimum, for example, is. How? Well, uh, the way of thinking is that we start from the node, okay? We want to find the, um, the, the, the node whose uh, key value is the smallest, it's a minimum. We know that this is six. If the, the minimum has to be uh, in the left subtree of six because it's smaller than this value, Okay, it has to be smaller. So that means that to find the minimum, we go left. And then the same argument holds here, okay? The minimum must be uh, smaller than or equal to three. That means that it has to be in the right, in the left subtree of three. So you go here. And then the same here, the minimum has to be in the left subtree of uh, two. So we continue to go left. But now when we go left, we go to nil. It doesn't have a left child. That means that nobody is smaller than two. Then we come back and say that this must be the smallest element of the entire tree. Okay, so this is how we find the minimum. Okay. And um, well, the question is that does the minimum has to be a leaf? What do you think? Well, in this particular case, the minimum, which is two, indeed is the leaf node. It doesn't have a right child. Well, if you think about it, okay, in fact, consider the following example here. Which node has the minimum? Well, we do the same. We start from the root. We said minimum has to be in the left subtree, so we go left and we go to three. And then we say minimum has to be in the left subtree, but then the left subtree is nil. So then we return back. We say three is the minimum, okay? Note that three is not a leaf node. So the minimum basically doesn't have to be a leaf, although it has to have no left child because otherwise it has a left child and then there's someone who's even smaller than it. You have to then go left. The symmetric argument holds for maxima. So to find the maxima, you know that it must be in the right child. So you keep going, following the right pointer, keep going right till you cannot anymore, and then you found the maxima. Okay. And um, now, if we're given um, uh, n nodes, we already said that um, that you can build many possible binary search tree on top of the, this n nodes. Okay. So the tallest the binary search tree. What is the height of the tallest binary search tree on the end nodes? You can think about it. Well, in the worst case, remember the example we had, what you could have is simply a pass, okay? So that means that the height of this tree is n. So the tallest possible binary search tree has height n, okay? Now, what is the smallest possible binary search tree? Okay. How do we get this? Well, intuitively, why is this tree has such a high, um, tall height? Because 
essentially we're not spreading the nodes out we're not uh, uh, around we're just uh, every time we keep going down each one has only one child okay in order to reduce the height naturally i want to kind of spread um, make the tree as fat as possible so that I can store the same number of nodes using a shorter height okay and the 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 shortest possible essential is that every node from the root at each layer always have two nodes and so on other than in the last layer you they don't they may not um the last two layer they may not have um uh, uh two nodes i mean become leaves okay so a tree like this is exactly the complete binary tree okay and its height roughly speaking if the height is h then i know that the first level has one node second level has two nodes third level because every node has two children so every time i go down one level in the height the number of nodes doubles and when I go to the H's level, the number of nodes in the H's level is two to the H. Okay, that means the total number of nodes is one plus two plus two square plus all the way two to the H. And I need this to be N, okay? And this is simply, this is a geometric series, and this equal to two to the H plus one minus one. That means that two to the H plus one minus one equal to N, that means that h equal to log n q minus one. So this is basically asymptotically log n. Okay, so unfortunately, but a binary such tree on n nodes cannot have heights shorter, asymptotically shorter than log n. Okay, this is because it's limited. Every time your fan node is only two, you can only be as wide as this wide. Okay, all right. So the important thing is to remember that um, for a um, binary search tree given n nodes, the tallest height could be n, while the shortest height can actually be logarithmic, uh, the shortest possible is log, log n. All right, so 